if the Gita is there, focus only on Gita. All else is just stories. Gita is not a story. Gita is a philosophical document of the highest order. It is not storytelling. Hello, I am Emily from Texas A&M University. And my question is more of an economics question as we've been talking about before. Uh, how can we encourage factories and companies in poorer areas to prioritize the health of the local environment when the nature of business is to prioritize lowest cost and a margin of a net zero profit margin? This is topped with the natural tendencies of human nature to prioritize greed above all else, profit over regulation. I didn't get the part about the about the local stuff. You may please need to repeat the question. My apologies. How can we encourage factories and companies in poorer areas to prioritize the health of the local environment when the nature of the business is to prioritize the lowest cost and maintain a net zero profit margin? This is topped. Okay, I got it. This is, okay. <laughs> You see, I don't think, again, continuing in the same vein, I don't think you can tackle this in isolation. Though you could bring about uh, suitable legislation, hmm? you could treat, for example, the climate as a person. And the climate could have its own rights, just as the... Um, there are fundamental rights given to persons. Similarly, treat the climate as a person and give it rights. And if those rights are violated, there would be penalties. Hmm? So that's a route you could take and that's an effective route that should be taken. But I don't think even this is going to be very effective. Right? It must be done. But even if done, it will have limited effectiveness. Though it's one of the things that uh, we should uh, begin with. Recently, um, a South uh, American country brought about changes in its constitution. They actually overhauled their entire constitution and the constitution is now uh, almost founded on uh, giving... Um, great rights to to the climate to the various uh, animal and bird species and it's a it's a document uh, worth emulating i think a lot of countries in the coming years will take inspiration from it and uh, actually need to take inspiration from it so that could be done but uh, uh, profit is profit, greed is greed, and when we do not respect the rights of sentient beings, people in flesh and blood we can see and talk to, how will we respect the rights of uh, something uh, a little... Uh, abstract as the climate you know the climate is not going to come and talk to you and plead to you as a person and the climate is not going to sue you on its own somebody needs to uh, act on behest of the climate as a proxy so i don't think we are going to be very respectful towards the climate on our own even though the right legislations are uh, important and must be there. So what to do then? You know, you need to tell people. There has to be the right kind of knowledge. What is happening is, we are in the middle of an information revolution, right? We all know we are. But this information revolution has 
not increased knowledge. It has not increased knowledge and for sure it has decreased wisdom. Why? Because there is so much information available to us, this part we see, what we do not see is that the opportunity to disseminate misinformation is now greatly available to the miscreants. So you get a lot of information today, several hundred times more than what you used to get 30 years back. But most of what we are getting now is misinformation or disinformation or false information or misleading information or distracting information. So the result is that the quality of our knowledge has greatly fallen. And knowledge is what forms our insides. On the outside, we are made of food, air, water, flesh bones. On the inside, we are made of knowledge. And the knowledge that constitutes our insides has become all corrupted. So what will happen is that there is this factory and this factory is harming the health of the local environment as you said. Right? But people have been taught that comfort and greed are more important. More important than uh, the health of the environment. That needs to change. Uh, Is it okay if I add on? Uh, What about the nature of uh, human nature to survive? Uh, It also prompts us to prioritize ourselves more and also adds on to that greed because naturally we want to survive. You see, we, we need to appreciate the the nature of the beast within more clearly. There was this uh, COVID uh, pandemic and people knew that if they would behave in certain ways, they may even die. Did they still behave rationally? The climate crisis does not even threaten you that much. Nobody will say that if the climate keeps worsening, then by next year, 35% of the world's population will be wiped out. So when it comes to having a good time, when it comes to having pleasure, the beast within is prepared to trade um, long-term wellness for instant gratification. Long-term wellness can wait. After all, we do not know whether we would be around in the long term. And somebody said in the long term, we are all dead. Anyway, so why not have a good time as long as it lasts? That's how the... Please. Yes, you have also mentioned that um, how with the skin condition, if it doesn't affect us directly, we more than likely won't see it. And I'm thinking that this is also what is what you're trying to infer with the climate crisis. We can't really see it directly, so therefore it's easier for us to ignore it and push it aside. So let me add, or rather let me ask you, what is it that we can see directly? You cannot, for example, see at this moment the the carbon dioxide concentration in the the air uh, increasing. We cannot see that. We don't even actually have instruments to measure that. The common man does not have that. But what is it? that we can see worsening on a daily basis and we are also concerned about what is that? The rising temperatures uh, with this current heat wave that's going on right now and then also in the past we've also had a snowstorm in this area so it's also we could see the issues going on too. You see the, the opposite is also sometimes evident. There are places on the planet that are having harsher winters 
and i have yes. seen people when when the winters are harsher they would say oh and then there are people who are talking of global warming where is the warming all i am experiencing is the cold so you see these temperature fluctuations are are not so wild or so apparent that they become indeniable hmm? when we want to stay in the false huh? when we want to deceive ourselves we get uh, enough evidence to stay in that deception the the proof uh, of global warming or climate change is still not irrefutable for those who are hell bent on on denying them there are we very well know there is a huge community of climate deniers that exists and who keep saying that uh, all this anthropological global warming thing is a hoax it does not exist yes. at all so what does that mean i mean that means that the common man still has a lot of places to take refuge in the truth is still not very uh, bluntly out in the open those who want to refuse it are still refusing it and will probably be able to refuse it for another i think 5 or 8 years at least so so my my, my question uh, uh, let me take that I I asked you what is it however that no person in a sense can refuse can he can neither refuse it nor can he pretend uh, disinterest from it what is it the fact that our lives are in a mess there is nobody who does not want to improve the quality of his life do we agree on that every single person on this planet wants change in his or her life and what is that change all about that change is about improvement we want to have a better life what does that prove we accept we acknowledge that our lives as they stand have problems in them otherwise why would we want to change or improve no we are all looking for change we we get up each morning and we say can we have something better can we reach a better place can we do something better whatever whatever no? can we eat something better so if we can show this to the person and impress on him that you need to be better your life needs to change then i think the climate crisis can also be addressed with the common man example how uh they would you give the term global warming and then others would be like how is it warming whenever it's freezing cold they fail to take into account the destruction of the ozone layer which protects us from extreme heat it protects us from freezing winters it protects us with from these extremes and they fail to recognize these issues that's going on through to due to the breakdown of the ozone layer you know you know i'm i'm a part of uh, certain whatsapp groups of uh, of intellectuals people coming from technological backgrounds working in tech companies having good tech knowledge and good numerical skills and uh, decently well informed people and there is a sizable lobby there that presents very very logical proofs backed by data and stats to prove that first of all climate change is not happening secondly if it is happening it is not happening due to human activity it is just something in the in the cycle of natural events it keeps happening all the time thirdly even if it is happening due to human activity it is actually beneficial for the planet because more carbon dioxide means more greenery <laughs> and these are not arguments coming from illiterate or mindless people these are arguments coming from seasoned tech professionals so if you want to rationally convince people about the climate emergency i am afraid you might not see much success i i'm aware that there isn't much success because we know human we're stubborn people we like to stay within our box but 
think of like the technological perspective, for example, like with an algorithms, which is trained to give feed people what they want. Uh, do you think that would also that is also part of the problem, too, of keeping people locked in? I'm sorry, but I lost that word you used in between. Oh, algorithms. Algorithms, right. Yeah. Yes. So, so what about the algorithms? So, uh, for example, with algorithms like Instagram, Facebook, or wow. TikTok, it's trained to keep the user engaged, which... Yes, very, very definitely. Right, right, right. Right, right, right. So, so you can see, you know, you are using AI in the worst way possible. Yes. Hmm? You... And, and would you contest it if I say that uh, i don't know how you would appreciate it but if it clicks it clicks the ones you can instagram for example is a lot of climate change instagram is a lot of climate change yes. hmm? all the emotionality that you see in the in the general public discourse be it politics or economics or uh, or social welfare all that is uh, a lot of carbon Hmm? I, I once said, all our emotions are carbon intensive. Hmm? All, the, all, the, all the natural, prakritic, animalistic emotions that we have, they are nothing but a lot of carbon. See what you do when you get emotional. And the moment you see that, it becomes amply clear. In your moment of emotional high, whatever you do, you would find that very surprisingly, all of that is very carbon intensive. So, definitely, I mean, uh, greed, if you let it have its way, it would consume everything, this entire planet. And, uh, so, you know, that's what I said. This might be called as the information age. But the level of wisdom is the lowest we have had in centuries. Yes. Huh? First of all, Information is there, no doubt. A lot of information is there, but not much knowledge is there. Otherwise, it's not possible that uh, uh, supposedly very knowledgeable people talk of uh, the climate crisis as a hoax. So even knowledge is not there, and what to say of wisdom? It has completely plummeted. You, you give uh, information to the uh, to the wrong entity and he will use it in the worst possible way the algorithms you talked of are a very good example that's what i am constantly asserting that we need to address the very center of the human being if we do not address that center then whatever else we say or do or try won't uh, see much success I believe that should be everything for me for right now. <laughs> but yeah. I, I did enjoy this conversation. Uh, I, I too enjoyed it. And there's a lot more we need to discuss on this. But to begin with, I think uh, this is a good start. Hi again. <laughs> um, my next question was regarding the human nature of greed um, and the human heart need to want to be the best and have the best. Um, how do you personally believe that we can shift that mindset to minimize the globe's impact on climate change and essentially change, change the heart of, you know, human nature and want to have greed and be greedy? No. We have to begin with observing the facts of life. And we have already made so many attempts at being the best and uh, being at the highest place possible and achieving the uh, best kinds of objects and we have we have been um, attempting that since long right and today we are attempting that with with more knowledge in our hands more prosperity in our hands mm, mightier technical tools in our hands we have been trying all that Having, trying, having tried all that, what have we achieved? Where do we stand? Is the common man more satisfied today? 
are we yeah we are living we are living longer definitely are we living deeper as well and if we are not living deeper is longer life not just a curse hmm? how about uh, being mentally unwell and continuing to live for 95 years i don't think that sounds very attractive hmm? but that's that's how we are uh, uh, living so that's true we are born desirous and we want all those things that you mentioned hmm? best places best people best positions best rewards best designations best packages we want all those things because there is something inside that refuses to be satisfied what is it looking for is that not a question worth considering hmm? if we sit down and very objectively in a detached way look at our condition and we have a lot of data to process uh, and uh, and rationally base our conclusions upon we need not speculate about who we are and what are we doing we have already done a lot and all that data is available by way of experience and memories so we look at all that we process the data and won't we see that the way we are uh, proceeding is simply not taking us anywhere the way is much the same as it was 10 centuries back we are doing what our grand 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 forefathers were doing hmm? just in um, an amplified way they didn't have so much uh, resources at their disposal we have a lot so we are attempting the same thing in a much bigger way they never got anything out of that how will we get anything as if something has fundamentally changed but yes technical and material progress would happen and material progress does have a value of its own so to the extent uh, that can uh, satisfy us we'll do well but beyond that it's uh, it's all zero zero in fact when you have a lot of material success and you are still empty within i fear the situation is worse compared to that of the person who is even materially insufficient because the materially insufficient person at least has a false hope that the day he will get money he will be satisfied but once you have a lot of money and we just said in this very conversation uh, i thought i read that the us now has some 22 million millionaires hmm? and uh, other countries are uh, not to lag behind in a big way hmm? even india when it comes to millionaires and billionaires is trying to keep pace with the richest countries of the world even as the average household income is uh, almost stagnant but the number of uh, very rich people is exploding even in india now where is that taking us uh, are we going somewhere are we reaching somewhere or are we or do we just want to blindly believe that our faith in material prosperity Mm, will be rewarded has it been rewarded till now the answer cannot be uh, in in binary material prosperity has helped but where in in which dimension we must carefully investigate yes today we have uh, fewer diseases uh, we don't die of polio we don't die of being you know killed by predators people are not dying so much uh, having been bitten by snakes or uh, chased by lions those things are not happening right but 
बट आर वी ओके द वे वी आर सो वेन यू क्वेश्चन दैट थिंग देन चेंज डिसेंड्स ऑन इट्स ओन देन देर इज अ साइलेंस देन द द इनसेन फ्लो ऑफ एनर्जी टूवर्ड्स ब्लाइंड डेस्टिनेशंस दैट फ्लो जस्ट tempers down little hmm? we do not remain very excited towards all those places we usually are and in that uh, and in that uh, mellowing down of excitement we find a concentration of energy because that excitement is nothing but dissipation of our life energy at 40 useless places hmm? when excitement and energy are withdrawn from those places because those places are seen as useless then there is a concentration of energy and that concentration then helps us overcome the real obstacles towards right living that concentration then gives a meaning and power to life and then you are not uh, very insistent on uh, making uh, consumption the bedrock of your existence then there are other things then you find that there are uh, subtler pleasures life has to offer you don't necessarily have to have a million dollars to burn on a yacht or in a shopping mall or at a jewelry shop or wherever huh? see none of this that i'm saying is idealistic hmm? it is not spiritual in the conventional sense it is also not idealistic i'm talking practical common sense i am talking of something that is very very applicable it can be executed it must be executed and uh, yeah it's not an idea it's a blueprint for action that was a great answer